Welcome to my Trend Spider tutorial. Today I'm going to teach you how to set up your chart, add useful indicators and widgets, and I'm also going to show you some other helpful tools. Also keep in mind if you want to subscribe to Trend Spider, you can click on my affiliate link down below and to use the current coupon code to save on your subscription. This is a very powerful charting tool and today I'm going to show you exactly how to get started. All right, so first up, when you subscribe to TrendSpider, they do a very good job with this step-by-step -step process of getting to this point in the chart. So we're going to start right here on a chart of SPY with our current built-out watch list. So the first thing we want to do is add indicators to this chart. And if you look at the very top of the screen, there's going to be this button that says indicators, and you can simply click on that button to highlight it green. And then if you click on the three dots next to it, you'll be able to add indicators using this screen here. So the first thing we want to do is type RSI and we want to add the relative strength index. And you can see as soon as I click on it, it's going to add it to the screen on the right. And this is going to be our list of indicators. The next indicator I want to add is called the Bollinger Band slash KC squeeze. So type BB and it'll be the top of the list. And you can go ahead and click that and add that indicator. And then we'll click on the MACD indicator to add that as well. And then next, we're simply going to type the word Bollinger and we're going to add these Bollinger bands. Just a couple more indicators. The next is going to be called volume by price. So go ahead and type volume by price and add that indicator as well. And then the final indicator I want to add is called the Alpha Trends Anchored VWAP. If you type the word Alpha, it's going to be the only indicator that pops up. So go ahead and click that one as well. So then when you've completely added all of these indicators, hit the button in the bottom right of the screen that says apply and you will now see these indicators instantly popping up on your screen. The next thing I wanna do is go over to where it says other data at the top of your screen and hit the three dots next to that. And here I want to click from the second from the bottom that says short volume, and then I wanna hit close. So now you can see I went from having a chart of just the price action candles of SPY to a chart that now has many indicators that I can use to my advantage. At any point, if I wanna hide these indicators at the top of your screen, you can simply hit the button that says indicators, and you can hit the button that says other data and you will be back to just showing the price action and the candlesticks. Once more, if I wanna add those indicators back, I simply go to the top of the screen and I click the indicators button yet again and all of my indicators will appear. If I wanna hide any specific indicators, for example, if I wanna hide the RSI, I go into the window pane that says relative strength index and there is this green box with the letter D which stands for daily chart, and I simply click that button and that indicator will now be hidden on my daily chart. I can do the same for the MACD down here below, go into the window pane for MACD, click on the button, and now I will only have my BBKC squeeze. If at any point I wanna add those back, I simply go to the top left of the chart and I want to hit the same exact button with the D in it yet again, and I can do the same exact thing for the MACD and I can add these indicators back onto my chart. So if at any point you wanna hide or show specific indicators, that's how you're going to do that. And if you wanna hide all of them, you simply click the button in the top of the screen that says indicators. And if it's green, it will be showing all of them. Otherwise, those will be hidden. So the next thing I wanna do is go to the very far right of your screen and there is going to be this widget sidebar and I want you to click on the button that says options and I want you to say add to a new column. This is the unusual options widget, which is very helpful seeing the options flow. And this is really going to help you see behind the scenes of what the options market is currently pricing in for your stocks. One thing I like to do for the options widget is I like to adjust the minimum premium to at least 50,000 or more. And then I can adjust the time frame to be only in the near future for where I want to see the options flow. And then I can see a very quick chart of the options flow for the stock that I'm currently looking at. And I can quickly see a visual representation of how many calls and how many puts are being purchased on this stock. Okay, so the next thing I want to do is click on the three buttons next to indicators. And then I want to go down to where it says Bollinger Bands. And right here where it says back color, I'm going to click that and I'm going to change it back to white. That way I won't have any background color behind my Bollinger Bands. And for the middle of the Bollinger Band color, I'm simply going to change that to green so that I can use that as a 20 period moving average. Also, while we're in here, let's type the word simple moving average and let's go ahead and add one more moving average. And for this one, let's change the length to a 50 period moving average and let's make that line color red. And then let's hit apply in the bottom right of the screen. So now we can see the middle of our Bollinger Band is now a green line, which is going to represent the center of the Bollinger Band or our 20 period moving average. And we also have this red moving average, which is going to be our 50 period moving average. So now that we have all of these indicators on the screen, let's talk about how you can use them in your everyday trading and how you can pair using these indicators with price action to get a lot better trade plan and make sure you're trading in the correct direction. So first we'll talk about the RSI and RSI is simply a momentum indicator that tells you whether or not the current trend is strong in the upward direction or strong in the downward direction. So to properly use RSI, when the RSI is above 50, that tells 
typically means you're in a stronger bull trend, which means you want to be looking for opportunities to buy the dip. As the RSI gets well above the 70s and starts getting overbought, that typically means you are due for a pullback, but be very careful confusing overbought with meaning that a stock is bearish. When a stock is getting overbought, it is typically in a strong bull trend, which means as the RSI cooldowns, people are usually looking to buy the dip. Now RSI also works in downtrends while RSI is below 50, you are usually going to be in a strong downtrend. And as RSI comes back near 50, you are usually getting into an opportunity where you're going to get a lower high before RSI goes lower yet again. So in strong bull trends, you want to see RSI above 50 and that tells you you're looking to buy the dip. And in strong bear trends, when RSI is below 50, you're looking to sell the rip and sell stocks at those lower high prices instead of trying to buy the dip. Next, we'll look at the BBKC squeeze. And this is going to tell us where the current histogram of energy is and where that energy is being released. So when you're looking at the dots on the BBKC squeeze, when they start to show red, that means you're getting that Bollinger Band squeeze, which means you are likely going to get a large move. And the direction of that move is typically going to be in the direction of the current momentum. So in this example, we're looking at SPY at the end of March in 2023. We had the RSI above 50. We had the BBKC squeeze firing red dots, which tells us it's building up energy, getting ready to release it. And then we had the histogram turning to positive energy at the same moment we had the RSI above 50. We were above the 20 period and 50 period moving average with the price action. And then we had a very powerful push to the upside. So without these indicators, you would have never known that that energy was getting released in the upward direction because we used the RSI and the BBKC squeeze histogram to tell us we had positive momentum. And then MACD below is a very similar momentum indicator. However, with MACD, you want to see the momentum above zero for bullish momentum and below zero for bearish momentum. MACD also has the histogram as well. So even if you're below zero and you start getting positive energy, you're just looking for a lower high and a downtrend. So if you learn to pair these momentum indicators together with your price action trading, you're going to get a little bit more information than the average trader who is not looking at these indicators and doesn't know the current momentum or the current squeeze direction. So if you practice pairing your price action with these indicators, you're going to have a lot better results and you're going to have a lot easier time quickly seeing where the direction of the trend is currently going by having this extra information in your back pocket. The next indicator we added I want to talk about is the volume by price and that is these gray bars on the right side of the screen and what this is doing it is now showing you support and resistance levels by pairing the volume with the price action that the volume was purchased at. So volume by itself doesn't tell you the whole picture but if you pair the volume with the price the stock was purchased or sold at now you have a lot more information of where the average stock trader is buying or selling that stock. So if you look at SPY, there is a very strong volume shelf, which is this very large gray bar that goes across the mid 390s, right around 394, which means if price is above that level, it's likely going to be support. And if price is below that level, it's likely going to be resistance. So if we were to see SPY pulling back into the 390s, that would be considered a demand zone because we have a lot of volume at that price, which means a lot of other stock traders have bought SPY in the 390s and would likely be happy to buy more or would be considering exiting their position if price started to break down below the volume shelf. So the way I would view this is any price above the volume shelf means the average person that bought SPY is, is currently profitable on their position and they're not likely in a hurry to sell because they're likely going to let that trend continue to run to see how much more money they can make. Now, if you're getting into low volume zones where there is no strong resistance like we currently see on SPY, that increases the probability price can push higher because there's not going to be a lot of resistance from the volume by price. However, looking at price action, you still need to look at where other resistance levels may be. And on this candle on the daily chart, we do have a higher high resistance level right around SPY 416.81. So you could also go take your line tool and you could draw a horizontal resistance line so that you can see that level on your chart. And that way, as price approaches that resistance, you would know to lock in some profits or even consider shorting this stock. Now, another way you can utilize the options widget is currently see if a lot of people are buying puts or calls and whether or not those strikes are out of the money, in the money, or at the money, and what expiration date these traders are looking for. So if we click the top right of the screen to maximize this chart, we can currently see that on SPY in the short term, we have a lot of at the money calls and puts, which means traders aren't expecting any large moves and they're not going very far out of the money. This usually doesn't tell us much in either direction, but it tells us we could be entering a trading range and it tells us there are quite a lot of bulls currently in SPY, but there are also still people hedging to the downside because we also see some large red bubbles as well. Typically, this isn't going to guarantee anything about where the stock is moving, 
but it will help you understand if the majority of traders are expecting upside or downside, especially when you're looking at individual stock names. So if you get in the habit of looking at the options flow, it's going to give you a little more information on where traders are currently expecting price to move. And you can also see the size of the trader. For example, these calls expire April 10th and have over $480,000 of premium in them. So somebody is clearly expecting SPY to go higher by the middle of April. And then one of our last indicators we added was the Alpha Trends Anchored VWAP, which is this purple line. And this is also a very similar indicator as volume by price. This is taking the average price anchored from the highest volume day and giving us a moving average to track of whether or not price is above or below the volume weighted average price. So this is taking price and volume and putting them together, which is a lot more useful information. And if price is above the volume weighted average price, that is typically bullish. And if price breaks down below the volume weighted average price, that is typically telling us we're going to see panic selling and we could go lower. So when you start to pair all of these indicators together, you now want to look at things like whether or not price is above or below your moving averages and your volume shelves. And you also want to look at whether or not RSI is above or below 50 to give you some momentum. You want to see if there are any squeezes in the BBKC squeeze and which direction that's likely to fire. And you can also look at your MACD to see whether or not we're above or below zero and where the current momentum is pushing price. If you pair all of these indicators with price action, you are going to be a lot better trader and you're going to have a lot more information than the trader that is not using these tools. So again, this was just a tutorial to help you get started on TrendSpider because there is currently a very good discount you could take advantage of. All you need to do is click the affiliate link down below in the comments or the description of this video and make sure you apply that coupon code at checkout. If you like these tutorial videos of how to set up your charts and do technical analysis, please let me know by smashing that like button. The more you like these videos and tell me you want to see more, the more of this educational content I'll continue to bring you. So thank you for watching everybody. And as always, I will see you in the next episode.